Well, greetings and salutations, everyone, and welcome to tonight's middle of the night, or depending on wherever you may live, early morning bonus upload. Before we get into this, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost you a cent. Click that like button, it takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go and folks, they really do matter. Now everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump in to tonight's early morning or middle of the night bonus upload, shall we? Today's first encounter is a subscriber submission. Hello Jeffrey, my name is Redacted and I was born and raised in a small town of Thomasville, Alabama, and have lived there all of my life. I am 59 years old, a retired registered nurse. I grew up on a dirt road in an old house that my great-grandfather built. There was thick woods behind the house and across the dirt road in front of the house. This land is still owned by my family. The old house, sadly, burned down when lightning struck it years ago. I had two younger brothers and two sisters. We would play for hours on ends in these woods, on both sides of the road. We would even venture out into a considerable distance to get to a creek that was in the middle of the woods so we could collect arrowheads and beads we would find along the creek bed. One summer day, all of us and two of my cousins were playing hide-and-seek across the road at the edge of the somewhat woods. There had been at one time an old house that belonged to my great-aunt situated there, but it had been torn down many years and all the debris and bricks from that house were still piled up with several feet of brick and broken blocks sitting on top of that pile. I was eight years old and I was it and had to count to fifty while all the other kids hid. I leaned against some of the bricks facing toward the road with my head down and counted. When I reached 50, I ran forward about 40 or so feet and looked around. I didn't see any signs of anyone, so I turned around and ran back toward the brick pile. I looked out toward the wood line past the brick and something caught my eye at the very top of this pile. I was completely horrified to see the face of something that had jet black long disheveled hair and black hair on his face as well as a beard, and hair above its top lip. Its eyes were open very wide and were very big, and the sink stared right at me into my eyes. His eyes looked as black as his hair. I was so scared I couldn't move. I kept my eyes on his the whole time that I stood there frozen, after what seemed like an eternity. I watched as this face very slowly eased itself down behind this brick pile, and when I could no longer see anything of it, I came to my senses and turned around and ran as fast as my little feet could carry me toward the house. As it happens, all the other children had decided to go across the road to hide so that I would have a harder time finding them. I never said anything to my mother about what I saw. As a matter of fact, I never told anyone about that encounter until fairly recently. I think my fear was just so overwhelming that I couldn't bring myself to talk about it. As far as I remember, I never did go near that part of the woods again until I was a teenager. I know for a fact that it was not a mean trick by my mother or father or by my uncle or aunt. Both men were gone to work and my mother nor aunt were even the type of people to do a prank like that. My mother was in the kitchen cooking when I ran into the house. 
I still don't know what it was that I saw. Now that I'm grown and know what scientists proclaim a Neanderthal to look like, that's the closest thing I have ever seen to what I saw that day in the edge of the woods. Do you have any thoughts on this encounter? My question. Wow, that's creepy for sure. Do you remember any clothing or anything like that? Response. I do not remember seeing any type of clothing. All I could see was its head and the top part of its neck. Usually save these to the end of the video, but a uh, couple things come to my mind. Um, the the beard uh, portion of the description was in quotations, meaning there was hair all around this creature or whatever face. Uh, but predominantly it was growing more so. Um, I believe that they saw, I'm not 80% sure that it was a Bigfoot. Um, but then I keep thinking about stories of these cave people that have been seen in like the, uh, Appalachians or the Ozarks uh, actually last night when I was doing the interview uh, with Roy we had discussed cave people uh, and people finding you know the actual living people living in these caves so I'm about 20% on that one but I'm thinking you saw a Bigfoot um, definitely wasn't a person because there's no neighbors you're on family property so thank you for sharing that encounter with us thank you so much today's second encounter for some background I used to live in Oklahoma more towards the center part of the state near I-40 I grew up there and have spent most of my life there until recently, job relocation. I also had a 25 mile commute to drive every day. I used to work mid-shift at a radio station, so my work schedule was from 4 p.m. to midnight. I used to drive home in the dark all of the time. Sometimes I would end up working overnight too and come home in the early morning. It's not uncommon to see a lot of wildlife in this part of the state. I don't know how many times I had to dodge deer, coyote on the way home. I will also say that I am no stranger to the woods or animals in them. I'm an avid hunter and fisherman. I've seen elusive animals here, mink, river otter, black bear, herd mountain lion, but I don't know what I saw one night. It was like any other night, I'd gotten into my car a little past midnight, tired and ready to go home. I started driving and got to the city limits. I would also say that the roads that I drive are very curvy, because there are a lot of native land in Oklahoma and the roads often have to weave around them in random oil leases. So after the curves in the road it straightens out because about two miles ahead, there is an intersection with a different highway. So when you come to that last curve, the road goes up a large hill and then drops down into a low but very wide valley. The width of the valley is probably about a mile wide. So when I topped the hill, my headlights shined in the bottom of that valley. That's when I saw whatever it was. It was just on the incline where my light was barely reaching. It was large and brown in the middle of the road. I kind of thought it was the glare of my glasses until it moved. It went off the left side of the road. I don't know what it was, but I saw it for about four seconds. I could tell it was hairy and it was large. If I had to take a guess, I would say at least seven feet tall. I couldn't see any appendages that well, but I could see some sway because when it got off the road, it reached out to part the grass. The ditch was full of about seven foot tall grass and river cane. After it was off the road, I couldn't see it anymore. My brain had trouble determining what it was. 
The only thing I would rationalize would a bear, but it wasn't the right color. Or it could have been a horse on its hind legs, but it wouldn't have been able to reach out like it did. It didn't scare me except for the fact that I thought I would have to dodge it with my car. I really want some opinions on what this could be. My best guess is it was a Sasquatch. Part of my state is known for it. The main cryptid for our state is the octopus, but it was not definitely that, lol. Today's third encounter. For some background, this happened December of 2015. In this story, I am 19 years old, a college student native to California. I have spent a lot of years in the wilderness as I was a venture scout. And I am well versed in self-defense and am altogether a pretty experienced hiker. This happened when visiting family in Bellevue, Washington, specifically in the area near Coal Creek. I go on walks a lot as it helps clear my mind and every day of this trip I would go on the morning and evening hike at around 7 a.m. and 4 p.m. respectively, just because the lighting situations in the Pacific Northwest can get pretty dicey fast. I was a college student my sophomore year of university, and I would specifically go on these walks to speak to my secret boyfriend, as I was in a conservative family who didn't want me to date until later on. While on the phone with my then boyfriend, I went down some old looking stairs into a vast clearing. I got weird vibes from it, but it was oddly tranquil, with a creek bubbling through the area. It was like a miniature valley, like a small divot or a bowl in the land. I was in a relatively suburban area near a busy street, but I couldn't even hear the regular traffic noises you came to anticipate from somewhere roughly suburban like that. Everything was silent for the most part, which usually would have tipped me off. But in my 19-year-old mind, it was an awesome environment for speaking to my secret boyfriend. So I take a seat in the riverbed on a large rock. The trees were like a curtain, and it felt so private, which I kept feeling was very odd. I continue to stay on the rock chatting and catching up with my boyfriend, but then I hear a large crack as if someone had snapped something large in half. I was weirded out by it, but continued to justify it by remembering that there was construction nearby anyway. My phone line starts to get a little funky as well, as my ex-boyfriend goes from clear to warbly. While waiting for the phone to connect, I remember impatiently making a few splashes with my boots in the creek. In the reflection of the creek under the tree cover, I see what I can only describe as a stag standing on its hind legs, but completely upright, but with hands of a human. This thing was big, I have to guess seven feet tall and thin, and was about 30 yards away from me. I freak out yelling my boyfriend's name in vain at the phone, sprinting up the stairs and running back to my family's house. I see my mom and shake her down and tell her about it. She first insists that I didn't see anything and I'm probably overreacting, but since I'm convinced, she lets up and lets me explain. She tells me to take a shower and take a nap, but I don't want to do that at all. I do shower and realize exactly how much dirt there was on me. That night, after making sure my family was asleep, I call my boyfriend and ask him if he heard anything that had happened. He claimed that he only heard my voice warbling wildly, and then he cut the line. I get frustrated because I might have been in danger, and he complains that there was no way for him to know something like that. For the rest of my trip up there, I go on walks, but avoid Coal Creek, and instead walk to Lake Washington in the mornings and evenings instead. However, since I am able to pass the stairs to the clearing, I had to resist the urge to look over every time I went on a walk. Every single time I think about it or tell somebody, I get massive headaches. I'm wondering if it's a mild form of PTSD, but I have had dreams about this thing, not doing much, but just staring at me. 
And whenever I do dream about it, I dream about the thing in my environment, wherever I fall asleep, which is extra unnerving. Today's final encounter. When I was 17 years old, my brother, a friend, and I were hunting in the wilderness behind our subdivision, just south of Florado, Texas. The area was being developed, so we were walking throughout wide swaths, about 50 yards of rough dirt that had been bulldozed through the mesquite and Pelo Blanco trees on the rolling hills. On either side of the swaths that would one day be streets were huge piles of dead tree, cactus, and grass. It was a gray day, rainy and cold. I think it was December of 83 or January of 84. We were on our way home walking downhill in the middle of one of those open dirt swaths. Then we saw it at the very base of the hill, about 30 to 40 yards away. A large black canine, a dog-like creature, ran from our left to our right, leaving the tangled brush on one side and dashing into a tree pile on the other. The way the animal moved and its shape made me think it was a hyena. However, hyenas are not black. My brother and I watched as our friend raised his twenty-two rifle and fired all of his ammo at the creature running. He didn't hit anything, he rarely did. He was always a terrible shot intended to use volume in place of accuracy. We saw the creature for maybe another 10 or 15 seconds as it loped across the opening. I never felt frightened as it never looked towards us. It was just on the move. After it had passed, I turned to my brother, who must have been 12 or 13, and asked, What did you see? Hyena, he said. Yeah, me too, I said. We made our way home, and later we continued hunting in those woods, never seeing that creature again. I forgot about it until I was in grad school in 2010. I was reading on Lauren Coleman's cryptid site, and he posted a story talking about the Shunkaworkin, a rare Native American cryptid. A specimen had been shot in the 19th century and was taxidermied body had been on display in a general store for some time before being lost. The article was about how the specimen had been found, and when I saw the photo, I thought, that's what I saw. I emailed Coleman, saying that I believed that my brother and our friend and myself were the last living people who had seen Ashanka, relating the same story as above. I received no response. I am a native Texan. My brothers and I have been lifelong hunters with guns and bows. We have hunted all over the state and know the animals that are in our woods. This was not one of them. It was not a coyote or a Mexican wolf. It was not a dog. After much research, I think it may have been something like the relic Ringdokos, a hyena-like canine that existed in the Americans in the past and is believed to have gone extinct about 10,000 years ago. Additionally, I am not an idiot or a bullshitter. We have plenty of those in Texas. I possess a degree in anthropology from the University of Texas at Austin and a master's degree in rhetoric and composition from Texas State University San Marcos. Prior to that, I served as a paratrooper in the 82nd Airborne Division for a few years. All right, folks, just a quick little middle of the night, early morning bonus upload to get us through until tomorrow. I hope you all enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. Guys, I really do appreciate all of your support. Your support is honestly what continues to make this channel grow and go and honestly what makes it a place that people want to share their experiences, theories, and ideas without judgment, ridicule, and simply with just the respect that they deserve. And it is truly appreciated. With that being said, please stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, our pets, family, and friends. These creatures are real. They are out there and they are dangerous. 
share this information with the people you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for answers or the truth, and God bless.